so this edge here is going to be basically flush there. So I'm going to have fiberglass cloth coming up here. It's going to round over that top corner and go up. So I need to round over this edge. And how I'm going to put this thing on is I'm going to put fiberglass on the bottom, two layers, and then set it down on top of things. And so I'm going to round over both sides of the back edge so that I can do about, this is about 16, so I'm going to do about 18, 19 inches. So I'm going to come here and wrap around. Um, and then I'll set that down and that'll get the back edge stiff. Now this edge here I'm not worried about because there's a giant piece of wood underneath it, so I'm not worried about coming around for stiffness immediately. Later on when I do the top, I'll do fiberglass on the top that rolls around this edge. Alright, so I'm going to take a piece of fiberglass right up to the back edge, over this way, overlap about two inches and wrap around to the front. I'm going to do at least two layers here. This is going to be the bottom of the seat, and I could just cut one, you know, eight foot length here, cut it in half and have two layers. I'm going to see how many various pieces of scrap I have and see if I can piece the bottom of the seat out of a lot of pieces of scrap just to use up all that scrap. If this looks like a hack job of thrown together scraps, that's because it is. I have six ounce fiberglass cloth, four ounce fiberglass cloth, I even have some chop strand mat that's left over from places. Um, and the key thing here is this is all going on the bottom of the seat, so it's visible only if somebody crawls underneath the seat and looks up. So I really don't care about the um, appearance as much as the strength. The only thing with the appearance might matter is this front edge right here. And you'll notice I have a pretty consistent set at the very bottom layer here of um, the six ounce fiberglass cloth in a mostly straight line. And so the order I'll be putting these on is from the top down. So I'll be putting that piece of chop strand mat on first, for example, and then all these random triangles and things I'll be putting down first. And my last layer will be those larger pieces that are mostly square that will wrap around the front here. Um, and I'll have, in most places, two layers wrapping around. Um, in some places I'm only going to have one layer wrapping around and I, that won't be an issue because after I put the back piece up here that joins in there from the bottom I'm going to be wrapping several layers around to join those two together. Um, and then of course I'll be putting fiberglass across the top of everything going through as well. Ideally if I had a large cutting table I could put them on that. I'm going to just put some boards up here, put the back piece up there, move all these guys up there, and then I'll epoxy in place down here before flipping it over and sticking it down, um, probably after moving that board to give myself a little more room. I don't think there's any good way to do this, but I'm going to try the fast way. Could have gone a lot worse. I have several layers of scrap fiberglass cloth and even some chop strand mat on the bottom of this bench seat and I'm basically using the epoxy that's oozing out of that to glue it to the top of the bench supports underneath it. Um, so all these weights are to kind of keep it down in a mostly flat way and make sure there's good adhesion between those parts. 
and then I'll be able to put the back up and then do some fiberglass over the visible surface on both of them together and then I'll have to turn it upside down and do a lot of work on the bottom to link the rear gap between the two of them together and probably put some more support behind the bench seat and little triangular pieces. I weighed this guy down with concrete blocks and bricks while it was drying and it worked great in the center area um, and even most of the end there but the very very end right there you can see kind of a little depression um, because I did not have a support underneath the foam core board right at where it touches the wall and I don't want that because water might pool there and I don't want water pooling on the seat I've specifically angled this seat kind of facing forward down so it will not pool there and run off the front um, so I may have to turn this upside down and put some weights and epoxy in the center there when I attach it to the sidewall to make sure that that curve isn't there. I wasn't going to do anything on the bottom until after I'd gotten the top done, but I think I might have to do that now just to get rid of that curve before I put fiberglass cloth and epoxy on the top of the bench. Now from a weight holding standpoint and how much it deflects when I sit on it, I'm pretty happy with how rigid it is. Before I flip this guy over and do some fiberglassing on the bottom, I'm going to clean up <clears throat> all of these little fiberglass fibers that are sticking out between the foam and the wood. And then on the back here, you can see you know, where the fiberglass cloth is nicely done, but there's a few places with extra strings that just kind of hung out and some drips of fiberglass that went underneath the plastic and so have plastic wrinkles all over them. Um, so I'm going to have to sand all of that down. I figure I might as well do it now before I flip it over instead of having to do it later after I flip it back again. Once this guy's flipped upside down, it's pretty easy to see this guy's nice and flat to there, but here, because I didn't have something supporting it, this guy right here needs to be pushed down a bit. So I need to get something that will put some weight down on that, while leaving enough room for me to put fiberglass and epoxy resin in this corner to kind of hold it in that position, just so water doesn't pool on the other side of it. Now on this side over here it's going to be easy because I have the double fake wall on the inside here for the drawer slides and I can just put a reverse clamp right under there and then push it down where I want it to be. Only issue is I need to cover the clamp with plastic so I don't clamp and epoxy my clamp in place. Now wouldn't it be nice if I had a clamp long enough to go from down there all the way up to the ceiling to push a little downward force on it so I didn't have to get exactly the right amount of weight in exactly the right spot. I probably could have done this with a stack of bricks because realistically the weight of this clamp is almost enough to hold that in place. I just have you know a couple of extra pounds of actual clamping force and mostly the weight of this long thing is going up there. It's holding it in place. But it is nice and small. I can wrap that end in plastic and basically still work all in that edge and maybe if I want to put something crosswise in here at the same time. Since I'm going to be mixing up a batch of epoxy to get that line there reinforced, I'm going to also do these two guys. I owe this interior panel here. And I have a whole bunch of these strut-shaped pieces of foam. So I figure I might as well put, wrap those guys in fiberglass cloth and kind of put them in between here. It doesn't really feel like I need them, but I'm working down here. I might as well mix up you know, a bigger batch just because the larger the batch is, the easier it is to get the proportions right. Wrap some extra cloth around things and stick them in since I'm here. It really isn't adding that much extra work to what I'm doing today. Since each of these guys is fit for its specific hole, I will uh, be just leaving them in the hole 
and then wrapping them with fiberglass and setting them back in when I do the layup. Because I want the epoxy and fiberglass to have a good bond here, I'm going to have to pick up every single one of these and sand down the spot it's going to lay in to rough up surfaces so any smooth epoxy like this gets roughed up so we can have a good mechanical bond there because this stuff is uh, past its green point, it's dry and so you know they're not going to chemically mix there I'm going to basically have to have a mechanical bond. Now it would certainly be more cost effective to cut strips of fiberglass off of my giant roll and use that, but from a convenience standpoint, it's really hard to beat these cloth tape rolls, which cost a little more from a square footage standpoint, but if you have the right widths that you want, it's really nice to just have it and go. And so, you know, something like this, I can say, hey, there's one wrap, I get it wet with epoxy, I wipe it, wrap it around tightly, I'm gonna get, you know, my gloves all messy, obviously, and then I uh, set her down where it needs to be. I'm using six inch wide cloth tape to wrap around the spars one and a half times. I'm using two and three quarters inch wide, maybe it's supposed to be three, but it's measured two and three quarters tape to kind of cover in this hole and bond to the two side walls. And then I have two one inch that I'm gonna put right in that corner right there. So I'm gonna have three total layers at the corner and then one layer that extends a lot farther out. So I'm doing that on both sides. Plus I have these leftover side reinforcement pieces I'm gonna stick on since I have the epoxy out. And I'm planning on just mixing epoxy and kind of pouring it into this well. And I'm going to you know, put this guy here on last. I'll probably actually keep it out there. Um, and then I can take these big flat pieces of whatever, tape or whatever, lay them down, get them completely soaked, and then put them where they need to be or wrap them around what they need to be wrapped around and set them in place. So I'm using my piece here where it's under the seat and nobody can see it as a place to put a whole bunch of epoxy on cloth. If you had a big table you could put some plastic down and do it on there as well if you didn't have a spot on the thing you're working on that you didn't mind getting more epoxy on. I have taken this backrest, flipped it up and test fit it, and it fit very well. So now it's time to cut some large sheets of fiberglass cloth to cover the entire back. I'm not going to be wrapping around the bottom or the top here. On the bottom, the front is going to wrap around and I'm going to have a gap to fill in with um, paste. I may have epoxy and glass beads. And in the top, it's going to go up and wrap around the back there. Um, so I'm going to have to shape the top front corner, round it over, um, and get ready for that after I do that. So for this particular piece, I am just doing the entire back, but I'm not wrapping around and doing the edges. The edge support will be done later. Um, I'm going to be getting in from the bottom and wrapping the back side on the top as part of the, the face of the seat. I'll be wrapping that, and then over the top of the back here, the top of that foam is going to be, the epoxy is going to be epoxied to the um, back of this wood here when I clamp it in place when I stick it up so I don't really need to go around the corner there. I'll go around the outside corner when I make the front face of the seat. Because the height of this bench seat back is pretty much exactly half the width of my fiberglass roll, I was able to pull a single eight foot section, cut it in half, and have two layers ready to go. 
these back walls have two layers on the front, two layers on the back, and they're pretty sturdy, but I want at least three layers on the back of this guy because when it's set up against the back there, as people sit against it, that back layer is what's going to prevent from flexing in. And so I want, I, I think, you know, more is better. I'm not going for four. I don't want to pull a whole nother set out of there and make two more layers. I think four layers is a little overkill. Um, and since I want just a third layer, I'm going to pull out small sections and put them this way. So I'll have one, two, three. That'll give me the advantage of having three layers without a whole extra cutoff as scrap. Plus, it'll have overlapping sections here and here, which are going to be near where I'm planning on pushing up some foam triangles in the back after I put it on uh, to support it a little bit more. Okay, so there's another layer made out of three pieces here. You can see I have a decent amount of overlap there and there, and since I have this leftover scrap that I cut from the ends, I'm probably going to put it right in that middle there. So I'm going to have four layers in the center section, and then I'll have three layers on the two side sections. I have all my fiberglass cloth laid out. This guy's ready to put stuff down on. Normally I like painting epoxy over the foam first before I put cloth down on it, just to make sure there's no air bubbles in the bottom. Um, but I'm working with my medium hardener here, and I know I'm going to need at least two mixing batches, so I'm going to start with a big batch here. Um, and because I'm working with a big batch, I'm going to take the first layer and I'm going to lay it down already there. That's the layer with all the little pieces that are all connected together. That'll leave me only two big pieces of fiberglass cloth to lay down afterwards. That way I can throw the resin on top of that first layer, let it soak in and spread out, put the next two layers on, hopefully um, not hit the pot life on my batch here um, because it is the medium hardener. So I'm working a little faster than I'd like. On the plus side, I could theoretically come back later in the day and fill in the gap between the two seats and the sidewalls with some glass bead epoxy because this medium hardener is going to harden up quite quickly compared to the slow hardener. sturdy enough I may not need to put supports back there. We'll have to see after I get the top fiberglass. Today's task is to mix up a whole bunch of glass bead epoxy putty and fill in these big gaps and that whole long little gap and those gaps over there. Doing this type of operation you want a tool of the proper diameter to make a fillet. Alright, this got real messy. I didn't have enough to do a full corner, and it was also a little bit of the wrong consistency. And I'm out of glass beads now, so I need to order more. So essentially, all this is going to be doing is tying those two pieces of fiberglass, you know, or this foam and that piece of foam and this foam all together in the corner there. So at least it won't wiggle around. But I still need to buy more glass beads and do a nicer job on the whole thing. I'll probably come back sand this down and when I cover the rest of it do this nicely as well.
It's not my prettiest job of filleting, but it's a lot better than a big open gap. And once I get in there with a sander after it dries, it'll be a lot better. Essentially, really, this is just, it's not for strength, it's just so that the fiberglass cloth, as it comes down, will go around nicely. While the glass bead epoxy putty is drying, I'm going to move to the top bit here. I need to cut off this fiberglass cloth that's sticking up. I'm going to round over this entire top edge on this side. That's wooden parts already rounded over. I'm going to sand the whole thing flat so that I can take a piece of fiberglass cloth, start, you know, two inches down here, wrap it over nicely rounded corners, go down, wrap it underneath the nicely filleted edge, go down, go around this nicely rounded corner, and end on that piece of wood right there. And that's going to be everything to tie the back of the seat, the back of the bench support, the seat, and then the front all together. The roundover bit didn't do as good of a job as I've had it do elsewhere. Might be because I didn't really have a 90 degree angle here in most cases. Um, I have little chops, little holes in the foam here and there, and there's kind of, you know, still gaps in between this a bit. I'm trying to decide if I care enough to do some type of filler, bondo, epoxy, putty up here in a layer to kind of really smooth it out and then sand it. Or if I'm just going to throw fiberglass cloth over the thing and count on the epoxy to drip down in all these holes and fill them in and just put excess epoxy there. Um, because this is the highly visible outside upper edge of the boat, I'm probably going to end up doing some type of filler in here and then sanding that down to make it look nice and smooth. I also had, you know, some epoxy drips down here that I had to sand off the foam. So the, the foam has some smooth parts and some rough parts, but I think that small surface texture is going to be covered by the weave of the fiberglass cloth. And then after I get two layers of that, I'll be doing epoxy to make kind of a, almost a gel coat. Not, I'm not going to claim I'm just good enough to be a gel coat, but something that's a nice smooth coat. So when I paint it, it'll look mostly smooth instead of woven. There are some fancy sanding systems that would let you electrically sand an inside corner like that. I don't have them, so I'm going to be using this on, you know, the, the edges to get anything on, you know, the edges knocked down and maybe around that a little bit. And then there's going to be a lot of hand sanding involved. I use this guy to make the fillets, so I can also use that to kind of sand in that same general radius. And then foam blocks are your friends, you know, you can bend them into kind of a general radius and get that general shape. This part here around this pipe is still a little bit ugly. The fillets are nicely rounded. There's a couple little places where I have dropouts and stuff because the glass bead putty was a little bit drier than it probably should have been. I'd like the whole thing to look like this as opposed to like that. Um, but you know, it's perfectly fine for wrapping epoxy around. Now what I am going to do is mix up some really thin glass bead epoxy, not even a putty, more of a paint, and I'm going to use it to fill in areas around here and just paint over these seams. I'm going to try to pool kind of a pool of liquid there to make this corner have more water flowing away from it, as well as this corner here. You can see underneath here I have a little bit of the leftover stuff I did my first one that had some little fiberglass, and I'm going to pool in there to try to make this a nice you know, smooth corner going in there. Also, I'm going to be doing this entire top edge. I'm going to be putting masking tape on either side of this to prevent it from dripping. That will mean the epoxy will stick to the masking tape and I'm going to have to sand that tape off essentially. Um, but I think that's better than trying to sand a whole bunch of drips that come down both sides.
and I'm leaving this thing to dry. You can kind of see, you know, it smooths out due to flow and gravity. I have little drips here and there, and places where I have removed the masking tape had a large amount of kind of a dam of, of uh, this stuff, and it's flowed out a little bit more. I can hit that with a flat sander and merge it into what's the flat surface next to it, so that's not really a big issue. I have some big puddles in the corners here to try to get water to always flow down and out. There's a little bit of kind of wrinkles or places where you know drips are going, but that's relatively easy to smooth out with sandpaper on a smooth surface. The top here has a lot of excess coverage. Um, and there's a few places, like right there, where it didn't completely fill the gap, but I'm not going to deal with anything of like that right now. Uh, but pretty much everywhere else, you can see this is completely covering that gap between the foam and the wood, and I'll just be sanding this thing over the top. And because it sands off so easily, um, I believe it's going to make a pretty smooth transition between those two. Half hour of sanding, and I have a relatively smooth surface up here. There's some little dots, places like this, where if I really cared, I'd have to put in more filler and then sand some more. But I'm just going to count on the epoxy resin kind of dripping into that and the cloth going over the top of it. Um, I have some you know, nicks in the foam here, some more bigger divots right here. But all in all, this transition is very smooth, and you can see kind of the wood to foam and the fiberglass in between line there, but from a smoothness standpoint, it's just perfectly smooth. So when I put a piece of fiberglass cloth over that, and then after that I put epoxy over it to get it smooth, and then after that I paint it, um, you're basically not going to have a visible transition between these two pieces, um, because it's really the color that you can see now, and once I paint it, you won't be able to see that color. Inside here, I could hand sand this to be a little bit smoother, but it's not bad. You know, there's a little divot right there. Um, and so I have my fillets here. Water will run down and out this way, all the way along there. Same thing over here. This big drip that was right there is mostly gone. I still have a little bit of waviness there, but I suspect that when I put my cloth, my fiberglass cloth up here, you know, I'm going to have a cut here and there, and it's going to uh, conform to that waviness. We're going to have some waviness in the final product there, but, you know, I mean, I have gaps underneath here where the foam isn't the same size as the uh, plywood, so, or the cedar board, so, you know, it's not going to be a perfect bench, but it's good enough for me to move on to the next step.